well here we are this really is the last final stretch i'm just leaving Wilpina pound resort and i just have three days left to make my way up to Paratuna Gorge and the end of the trek. Oh, it seems so surreal, I just can't, can't really get my head around the fact that I've nearly finished and the fact that I've actually managed to walk, you know, nearly 1200 kilometers now. It's just, yes, it's kind of, kind of strange. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so today I'll be making my way to Yanyana Hut, which is about a 22 kilometer walk. Um, I've started, it's just uh, 5.30 now, just got dawn light um, coming over the horizon. So tomorrow I've got a longish day of 26 kilometres to Aruna Ruins and then the final day um, I get, I think it's 18-19 uh, kilometres to the end. So, oh it's all pretty exciting! <laughs> Something I hadn't really expected so much up here in the Flinders Ranges is finding these beautiful green glades of native pines. It's probably about as green as they get being the end of winter or start of spring really. But I just found me an echidna. Good morning, good morning. It is the penultimate day of my trip, second to last day, and um, I have just already made it to Middlesite Hut, which has been about eight kilometers uh, already. And I got here just before sunrise, which was beautiful. Uh, sun's just coming out now. Um, so it took about an hour and a 45 to get here this morning. Uh, so I'm just sitting down, gonna cook, cook up some breakfast before I head on to the next 18 kilometers for the day. Uh, had a wonderful afternoon yesterday with the, uh, the rain, rainforest people, as we call them, uh, a group from Queensland that uh, they're doing the same section from Wilpena through to uh, Paratuna, but they're taking about six days to do it. So doing a few side trips along the way, but we, uh, we all ended up at Yanyana Hut last night and uh, sat around, did, had some sing-alongs with the ukulele and, a whole lot of chatting and uh, yeah, good company, good company indeed. So I wish them all the best for the rest of their trip. I was flying today. I, it was an easy trail. I think maybe the excitement about seeing all my friends and family tomorrow might be, um, might be giving me a little bit of adrenaline or something because uh, I've done my 26 kilometers, including having uh, an hour and 15 minute breakfast stop. Um, and I've got to camp and it's 11 a.m. Hmm. So I guess that means I've got time to wash my shirt and uh, relax, read my book for a while or something. So I'm at Aruna Ruins Campground. Um, this is one of the um, national park campgrounds which you had to pay for. So um, I organized this way back before I started. I only actually only remembered that when I actually walked in and saw the numbered campgrounds um, but my, my campsite's got a lovely little fireplace and great big rock which is perfect for cooking lunch on so I'm gonna make the most of this lovely afternoon and I will see everybody tomorrow well this is another thing I wasn't quite expecting up in the Flinders and that's rain but it's pretty good though. Hasn't been too heavy, but a few big, big blobs coming down. So here I am in my tent on the last night of the trail. Um, yeah, it's a strange feeling to know that tomorrow I'll be back with my friends and family. I'll get to see Linda again. So I'm hugely excited about all of that, but at the same time, I'm not looking forward to leaving the trail, to be honest. Yeah, the real, the real world is, doesn't really seem that appealing right now. Just, it's been two months of kind of disconnecting. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's 
confusing. <laughs> Not quite sure what I'm feeling right now. Um, I mean, I know I'm going to be, yeah, just, just so happy to see, to see Linda and, and my family and friends tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I might be leaving a little bit of my heart out on the trail as well. Well, here I am. I'm actually about 500 meters from the end of the trail, but I tried really hard today. I slept in, I started late, I walked slow, and I've still got here two hours early. So I found this beautiful gum tree to set up my um, foam pad on. And um, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna hang out here for a couple of hours and then just stroll into the finish line as if that was my plan all the way along. <laughs> Well, I'm sick of waiting, so let's do this thing. This is the last few hundred metres of the Heisen Trail. So I decided to do this hike basically because I wanted to prove to myself that uh, narcolepsy wasn't going to hold me back and that I could do things that are really out there despite, you know, having to deal with this horrible condition. And I'm really proud of everything I've achieved. Uh, not just the fundraising and a massive thank you to every single person that's chipped in with some, some donations. Um, there's just, that really is just icing on the cake. It's just fantastic. But also just, I'm really proud of myself for, you know, pushing through and walking the entire 1200 kilometers um, it's, it's certainly been a challenge physically, mentally, emotionally, um, but it's also just been the most wonderful uh, and amazing experience as well. So living with a chronic condition can be really tough. And although nobody really chooses to focus on the negatives and, and think about the bad aspects, um, it can be very easy to fall into that negative spiral. And something I've really noticed a lot on this trip is that you can choose to really think about the positives in your life regardless of what else is going on with your situation um, and really just be positive. Um, look at what you can do instead of what you can't do. So narcolepsy has taken an awful lot away from me and where I thought my life was heading, but I just have to come up with plan B and uh, do some different stuff. Yeah, I feel like I'm feeling very positive at the end of this trip. Feeling, um, I'm not, not quite sure what life's gonna hold for me from here on in, but I know it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> hey! Yeah!